very warm welcome to yet another episode of the Pearson Teaching Awards. Well, all our viewers who've been following the series have known by now that Pearson is one of the leading education companies in the world that has been servicing in the sector for over 150 years in more than 70 countries. Well, to tell us more about the group and the great initiatives taken by it, I have with me the Managing Director of Pearson India, Mr. Deepak Mehrotra with me, sir. A very warm welcome to you. Um, Deepak, before uh, we talk about the initiatives taken up by Pearson, if you could give our viewers a sense of what the organization stands for and also the key areas, the focus areas as far as India is concerned. Thank you. Uh, we as a company have been in this space for a very long time. Mm -hmm. We have a presence in more than 70 countries, there are more than 40, 48,000 uh, employees engaged in ensuring that the learners who engage with us are delivered the outcomes that they're seeking. Uh, within India, we have about 1,500 strong uh, employee force. We have a presence in almost all ages and stages of the learner's uh, life cycle. So whether it's the learner at the age four or the learner at age 25 who could be working and is wanting to skill and reskill, mm -hmm. we have a presence across. Right. In India, our focus is around four areas. Mm -hmm. We uh, do a lot of uh, things around school, higher education, uh, vocational, and, uh, vocational and skilling and English. Yes. So in each of these, uh, there are products and services that we offer right. and that's what we do. What we intend to do over the next few years is to increase our presence in each of these areas and uh, ensure that the kind of yes. impact that we are creating with our uh, learners at multiple stages of the life cycle yes. is of an order which is significantly higher than what we have been doing so far. Absolutely. Also, sir, uh, Pearson has taken up some very noble initiatives. One of them is also ensuring efficacy in the teaching outcomes. If you could just elaborate on that and tell our viewers what the concept of efficacy is all about. The concept of efficacy is new to education, yes. but it's not a concept which is new at all. A learner wanting to learn English mm -hmm. uh, goes through a typical Pearson product and say you we assess you at the stage of coming in uh, we tell you you are at a proficiency level one if you are wanting to learn English for an outcome of you yes. know for in a business situation or in a social situation you need a proficiency level of say a five or a seven we help you navigate this path through a very well calibrated program and yes. at the end of it, you are assured of that outcome. So with a degree of uh, uh, sureness and uh, what you talk about as uh, surety around an outcome that, that's delivered. Yes, sir, talking about technology, we know that technology has taken over in a big way and especially digital media, uh, you know, ways of education have changed and these days we are taught uh, with the help of digital media. How do you think Pearson is taking a lead in that aspect, getting technology in the education sector? I'd like to answer it in two parts. You know, uh, globally, we have made a commitment to move uh, to the digital and the technology-enabled education space in a very big way. So that's part one. If you look at India in specific, there is this whole evolution that's happening. Your internet penetration currently is only around 15-16%. Uh, Over the next few years, it's expected to go to upwards of 30 the device on which a person goes uh, uh, online is changing dramatically. It's becoming more and more a mobile phone on which a person is getting there. Uh, also add to that the element of the youth population. The median age of the country is going to be less than, significantly less than 30. That puts a very different kind of situation in front of a provider like us. No, we need to, uh, we have a very strong presence in the publishing space, mm -hmm. but the content needs to get repurposed for a learner to learn at its own pace in the situation that a learner wants and through the consumption media that the person, may, that the learner may choose to have. And that's the challenge for, that we are grappling with. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope to be able to solve most of these things and have technology enabled education delivery uh, yes. for most of our learners as we go along. Which will be very good. Um, coming back to the initiatives, sir, Pearson has taken up some very noble initiatives uh, like the Pearson Teaching Awards, which will encourage more youngsters to take up teaching as a profession. And also, thank you, teacher. Uh, we'd like to know what was the motivation behind this initiative? You know, the, the Teaching Awards is in the second edition this year. 
Yes. Uh, when we started last year, we picked up a lot of feedback around uh, how teachers are looking at it. So we uh, started off with a uh, voice of teacher survey this time. Uh, and what you were hearing from the survey was very, very strong voices coming back to us saying that, listen, we as teachers don't believe that we get valued both by our societies and by the students that we impact. So we, around the teacher's day, we uh, launch a campaign uh, saying, you know, uh, as a learner, you could go back and thank your teacher. Uh, and it picked up phenomenal momentum. Yes. We picked up 30,000 nominations of which various people and that sent from all over the country. Yeah, all over the country, 30,000 nominations, and it would that's that's a very big campaign for anyone in the in the education space at that point in time. And then we said, uh, having thanked your teacher, you could nominate your teacher for the teacher award. And uh, we picked up. Uh, there were last year there were about 2,000 nominations. This year. The total number of nominations are a little under 6,000. Mm -hmm. uh, there are 18 categories in which the nominations have come in. And uh, these 6,000 nominations have gone through a process of uh, jury screening. Yes. There is an eight-member jury which is, uh, which is reviewing the final shortlist of 100. And we are all looking, expectantly looking forward to the results of what the jury has yes. in store. And uh, we look forward to welcoming our winners. Uh, of the 20 awards, the so 18 in the category and two of yes. uh, the best uh, teachers uh, very shortly in Delhi. Yes, we are all very excited about that Deepak, but before leaving, any special message that you would like to give for your own favorite teacher? You know, I would like to leave a message for, for not just my teacher, but for the larger teacher co community in general. Uh, I believe they are doing a phenomenal job. It's a thankless job. Uh, it's not something that people recognize on a, uh, on a regular day, but it, the job is a very, very noble one. And uh, I urge more and more people to join the profession and the ones you are there, stay with it because what you are creating is much more lasting impact on the society. For my, my own beloved teacher, I've had uh, some very interesting teachers uh, help me step in at the right time in my various stages of life. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, I have not been able to go out and do that uh, in person, mm -hmm. but I would like to use this uh, forum to thank them for what they did for me. And I am where I am uh, because of the kind of extra effort they took to reach out to me, uh, counsel me, provide me that additional emotional and uh, uh, yes. faculty support, so to say. Uh, in enabling me realize my goals. Thank you so much. I wouldn't have been here without you. Well, that's such a wonderful thought, Deepak. Thank you so much for joining us here today. On that note, it's time for us to slip into a short break, but stay tuned because on the other side of this break, I will be joined by a panel of guests to tell us more about the Pearson Teaching Awards, the initiatives taken up by Pearson, so stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back. Well, earlier on the show, the Managing Director of Pearson India, Mr. Deepak Mehrotra, told us about the great initiatives taken up by the Pearson Group and taking that forward, I am now joined by a panel of guests with me. Well, I have with me Mr. Srikant Tayyar, Chief Executive Officer, Pearson Education Services and Tutor Vista, Mr. Anish Sri Krishna, Senior Vice President and Business Head, Higher Education, Pearson Education India and Mr. Arun Rajamani who leads the Microsoft's public sector business in India. And also joining me live from Bangalore is a former Indian cricketer Anil Kumble. A very warm welcome to all of you. Anil, if I may come to you now, you're a master in your own field. If you could tell us how efficacy has touched your life. Oh, for, for a sportsman, I guess, uh, you know, especially if you're a cricketer and if you're a bowler, for me, the last column was extremely important. So everything had to be performance related. Everything had to be uh, measurable. Uh, result oriented. So for me the last column which is the wickets column is extremely important and for that uh, how do you get that uh, result and what is the process to achieve that result. I mean I always played the percentage game. Uh, as a bowler it's like uh, uh, you know you're asking a question uh, to, a, to a batsman and how you ask those questions 
uh, whether you put the same question in a very different way or you uh, ask different questions through va various variations that you have as a bowler is, is the intelligence of a bowler and that's exactly how I uh, went through my education as well. Anil, uh, times have changed and with time the ways of education has also changed. It's not like our times when it was just the chalk and talk method. Do you think that more competition is preparing the students for better challenges tomorrow? No, absolutely. I think uh, you know, education has seen a, a very uh, vast change in terms of technology coming into education itself. Uh, while I was uh, studying, you know, it was always uh, a teacher, uh, students facing the blackboard. Today it is not that. I mean, there's a lot more uh, practical uh, education. People uh, actually do a hands-on, uh, you know, if it is science, uh, they delve into projects and they understand uh, the project itself. So hence, I certainly believe that all these tools uh, which have come into education have made it more interactive, more fun. Oriented. Well, uh, coming to you, sir, let's talk about the right of education that came into force about three years back. It was then that things changed for children in India. Every child got a right to education and the enrollment numbers in schools definitely went up. But uh, what declined was the quality of education and the learning outcomes actually. Do you agree with that? And if yes, then what exactly is Pearson doing to deal with these challenges? Uh, as Pearson, uh, uh, what, we try, what we are trying to do now is that in every product and service that we have, we are, we are trying to put it through an efficacy framework. Uh, yes. This efficacy framework uh, consists of four stages mm -hmm. or four parts. Uh, one is that we want to identify what the intended learning outcomes are in anything that we do. Uh, then two is that we also want to identify the evidence that we are going to collect for proving that these learning outcomes that we have earlier started out with, whether they are being achieved or not. Yes. The third one is what and how we are going to collect that evidence to prove the learning outcome. And the fourth piece is what is the time frame that we are going to allocate for us to achieve the learning outcomes. So anything and everything that we do, we pass it through this efficacy framework and uh, uh, we believe that this will go a long way in ensuring that there can be uh, a, a, a very, very concrete method of measuring uh, improvement in learning outcomes. Sure, it will. Uh, Mr. Arun, Microsoft has been working very closely with schools. What do you think Microsoft is doing uh, to aid the schools uh, technology-wise in the process of learning? Over a number of years, Microsoft has been working very closely with schools, both in the government and the private sector, to ensuring that uh, ICT infrastructure is first put in place. But over a period of time, we have realized that just providing ICT infrastructure has not been sufficient to drive the quality of education. So we've shifted our focus now from having uh, to do a number of strategic priorities, which includes equipping educators uh, with better skills and digital literacy skills so that yes. they can go back and coach and mentor students better. We've launched a project called Project Shiksha, uh, which we've been running for over a decade, where we have trained teachers across the length and breadth of the country in over 17 states. And okay. till date, we have trained close to about 750,000 teachers, oh. uh, who in turn, we believe, have impacted about 32 million students. Anish, uh, what do you think are really the concerns of poor learning outcomes in the higher education? And how do you think the efficacy framework of the Pearson Group is uh, helping in that area? India has one of the largest higher education systems in the world. And we've seen a massive spurt in the number of institutes and the number of, right. the number of universities coming up over the last 10 years. What that has also resulted in is a massive shortage of quality faculty. It has resulted in uh, areas where the private sector is suffering from governance issues and there are uh, problems of quality of delivery and content. We believe that as India, as the government looks to improve our gross enrollment ratio, to 30 percent, uh, which is almost a doubling of our current cross enrollment ratio uh, in the next say, seven to eight years, we will need to ensure that these quality problems are not exacerbated and they don't get accentuated. And that's where Pearson believes that the efficacy of what we put in is of utmost importance. Pearson efficacy framework is a very robust, scalable, rigorous uh, 
uh, process which uh, looks at whether the conditions for an efficacious learning outcome are present in the program. We put within higher education globally, we put a number of our programs and content development mechanisms yes. through this system and we have discovered the areas where there are areas for improvement mm -hmm. and we put those programs through that. Of course, uh, that's there and uh, also Anish, I'm sure you will agree with me that technology mm -hmm. has become a part of our lives in, at every level. So, how do you think Pearson is taking a lead as far as technology is concerned in the field of education? You're absolutely right. Technology is, is becoming central uh, to answering some of the very hard questions that we face, uh, yes. especially in the higher education sector. We have uh, questions of cost, of infrastructure, of teacher quality. Uh, which technology can play a very big role uh, in changing and, and uh, bringing, bringing more and more students into the higher education fold. Pearson brings a whole range of technology solutions from e-books to e-learning to platforms like MyLabs and Mastering to ICT solutions like DigiClass uh, and repositories which yes. are custom built for universities. We also have India's largest uh, network of VSAT enabled test prep centers which delivers uh, uh, coaching for uh, IAS and for uh, CA aspirants. Uh, and this brings very acclaimed faculty at a very, at a very scalable, efficient, technologically based platform, which actually delivers quality learning at an affordable cost. And that's Absolutely. exactly where uh, our technology efforts are. Absolutely. Uh, Mr. Srikant, how do you think Pearson is um, helping um, in introducing technology in schools? I think one big area where technology can make a difference is in personalizing education. Uh, I think the more we are we, we getting uh, 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 into various kinds of uh, courses that uh, children and adults want to do, the more that we need to personalize education using technology. Uh, we have many products, uh, tablet based products like MX Touch for example, uh, we have a product called DigiClass, all of this caters to uh, 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 personalizing uh, education, uh, uh, non-technology product, for example, like a textbook treats all of us the same way, irrespective of the pace at which we can learn or what we want to learn. Um, Arun, uh, Microsoft is the technology partner for the Pearson Teaching Awards. What do you think was the motivation behind this? Well, uh, I would mentioned to you that, uh, you know, equipping uh, educators with better skills has been one of our core priorities mm -hmm. and uh, there can be no better forum for us to partner uh, with Pearson's to recognize those teachers who have actually made a big difference uh, to students and therefore it's a very proud moment for us to be associated with uh, Pearson's and we hope that we will continue this association for a long time. Yes of course and we are all very keenly waiting for the results of the Pearson Teaching Awards. Well on that note it's time for us to wind up this episode of the Pearson Teaching Awards. Thanks to all of you in the studio here and also Anil Kumble who joined us from Bangalore. Thank you so much for joining us here today.